first of all, welcome to our web conference in the name of uh, Munter TBV. We are the German member of the IMMR, the International Movement for Monetary Reform. And with the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have started to host several web conferences in respect to the monetary and economic aspects of the Corona crisis. And today we're really happy to organize a rather international debate with the title Public Digital Money Revolution, CBDC, a different vision of money and banking. So that means that we will examine and discuss central bank digital currency, or short CBDC, which is of high relevance nowadays, um, since the ECB has recently also published a new report on the digital euro. But in general, the digitalization of our society, as well as the developments of private cryptocurrencies and Libra and stuff, there are rising lots of questions about our money, our digital money and its future. And so obviously nearly all central banks around the globe are working on or at least debating CBDC. But the key question to us, or at least to me, is under what specific conditions and design principles is CBDC useful for civil society. And our expert today will give us his view about CBDC as a potential public digital money revolution. So a warm welcome to Mr. Miguel Ordonez, former governor of the Bank of Spain, and of course, a well-known economist. Mr. Ordonez will start with the presentation. Afterwards, our board member, Manuel Klein, will ask further questions, and then there will be time for the questions from the audience. Um, so, Mr. Ordonez, the stage is yours, and I'm really looking forward to your talk. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much. Well, many thanks to Monetati for inviting me to this seminar. I've learned a lot from Monetati, and I am delighted to share with you my thoughts on the CBC debate. This is an interesting time. I never thought it could come so soon. Most central banks are studying the introduction of public digital money. In the European Union, the ECB has presented a good report on the digital euro for public consultation. And the Eurogroup has scheduled a first discussion on the digital euro for March next year. The explosion of reports, documents, conferences, the extensive and intense work of public and private entities is being a revolution. Now it is a revolution in ideas, but it will end up having effects on reality. It will end up transforming money and the financial system. This interest in CBDC appears now when just two years ago, the idea of public money accessible to all citizens was ignored by most central bankers, by finance minister, and by most of the academic economists. So before I deal with the current debate on CBDC, I will compare the conventional view of our monetary system with the view of those who propose to replace the current private and fragile money with a public and safe money, which would allow the full liberalization of banking activities. The most serious problems of our current system are the lack of stability and indirect monetary policy and the lack of innovation and competition in the payment market. There are other problems, but these three are the most important. Most economists have held the belief that these problems could be mitigated by increasing regulation and state protection of banks. This explains why after every banking crisis, the reactions of the authorities have always been to approve more regulation and more protection for banks. This happened after the great crisis of 2008. Most economists and those responsible for governments, central banks and international organizations agreed on the diagnosis of the crisis. The market has failed, we all said. Not only leftist economists, but even liberals like Alan Grispan confess the error of having believed too much in the market. The result of this diagnosis was to increase state interventionism and protectionism. The volume of regulation multiplied with Basel III. New supervisory bodies were created. Deposit guarantees were extended. 
and central bank increased the volume and variety of their interventions, reaching levels of interference in the markets that years ago would have been inconceivable. But in those years, a minority of thinkers emerged who proposed a different solution to replace, to replace the fragile money of bank deposits with a public and safe money issued by central banks. The cause of the problems is that private money is not safe money. If we have safe money, we would not need all the protection and privileges that banks have, and we could also eliminate the prudential regulation with which regulators believe they can prevent bank failures. From this different point of view, the diagnosis that the market was to blame for the great crisis was wrong. On the contrary, the problems are the consequences of a system in which the state for many years, decades, even centuries, and in order to avoid bankruptcies and deposit runs, has increasingly protected the banks with all sorts of privileges and regulations so the citizens could use bank deposit as if they were safe money without fear. Until very recently, this idea of introducing public and safe money, what we call now CBDC, central bank digital currencies, was a quasi clandestine idea discussed in small circles. Why suddenly the debate on the introduction of a public money has left the underground? In the first place, it's curious that this idea of introducing public money has not jumped from theory to reality because public authorities would have wanted to solve the stability problems of our system. It has arisen due to the inefficiency in payments. It has been the slowness, the cost of payment services, the exorbitant commission charge in cross-border services, the exclusion of millions of people who do not have bank accounts, and the lack of innovation in these services that has led the public money idea to jump from theory to practice. It has not been the public authorities. It has been the private initiative that is forcing the authorities to consider the need for such a reform. Facebook initiative to launch Libra has been an important driver of this debate. And we could also mention the Central Bank of China project and even the coronavirus. But whatever has led us to consider introducing CBDC, how do evaluate it? We know the benefits of sovereign money that will completely replace fragile private money. It is what we could now call a full CBDC. But this is not what is being discussed now, but the introduction of a limited CBDC to prevent it from hurting private banks. Then how do evaluate this limited CBDC from a public point, uh, interest point of view? Certainly, the introduction of a limited CBDC will not imply a system change in its fair face. The conventional view will continue to predominate. Access of all citizens to public money will be limited to avoid its negative impact on commercial banks. Bank deposits, all those fragile assets, will continue to exist. The problems of systemic instability and ineffectiveness of monetary policy will subsist. All this is true, but the work that is now being done to introduce this limited CBDC is very valuable and absolutely indispensable to achieving a full CBDC. In the first place, much progress is being made in solving many technical issues, such as the choice of the best technologies, the design of architecture that give an adequate role to the private sector, the interoperability of the different platforms or the different ways to ensuring the privacy desired by users, and many, many more. 
To get an idea of the many important topics being studied, I recommend reading table one on page 11 of the latest BIS report. All this enormous expert work would have been equally essential in a project that proposed to replace all private deposit with public money, and therefore this limited CBDC will facilitate the transition in the future to a full CBDC. Most importantly, the limited introduction of CBDC has already served to spread knowledge about the benefits of public money to many experts and analysts who until now have practically ignored the idea of replacing the current system with a more stable one. And the mass media still barely dealing with digital public money are likely to start reporting it. The public consultation opened by the ECC, ECB should serve to complete these works with the vision of the public interest and the participation of civil society. I will end by saying a few words about the future of the financial system once this limited access to CBDC is in place. Despite the limitations that are finally imposed to protect the banks, when payments with public money are open to new competitors, banks will begin to feel their disruptive effects. These disruptions will have the positive effect of alerting banks that they will not be able to maintain all the privilege and protections of the state forever. And this should encourage them to transform themselves into entities that can function in a world totally subjected to competition. Today, banks have a high quality human capital because they have been able to offer high salaries to the best. These managers must transform their entities so that without the state ad, they can offer what users want. Citizens and companies will no longer be captive. They will no longer be forced to go through banks to make their payments. Banks now see the evil of allowing citizens access to public money. But at some point, they will realize that by giving up creating deposits, they will be able to develop other financial activities more profitable than this business. In addition, they will be freed from complying with strict regulations that would no longer have justifications since public money is totally safe. Those banks that do not adapt to what users want will disappear. But normally, some banks will adapt and survive. This has occurred in other sectors, air transport or telecommunication, for example, where technology and liberalization have radically altered the inventory of companies. The improvement in payment services will be the most visible effect because new providers will offer a variety of new services that we cannot even imagine today. Furthermore, the use of public money by all citizens will draw attention to the other problems in the current system. Today, people are unaware of these serious problems because the protection of the state has an anesthetic effect which prevents them from feeling the problems because the objective of the subsidies and protection is precisely that depositors do not realize the vulnerability of private money. But the introduction even limited of public digital money will be a Pandora box that will increase the demands of keeping all money safe and removing unnecessary protections. In the specific case of the Eurozone, people will realize that we would not need a common deposit insurance or a common resolution fund issues that are producing a confrontation between our countries because the digital euro would not be fragile. It would not depend on the solvency of private banks. We would not need more capital injection to save banks and monetary policy would not require massive interventions in financial markets because the central bank would not need to manipulate interest rates. Certainly, 
there is still be problems in the financial system, but we will not longer have the problems that we have created with the many regulation and protections of the state. Now, after the failure of planet economies, in most countries of the world, both the production of goods and services and part of the financial system are already subject to market rules. But banking services are still heavily intervened by the state, and this is damaging growth and welfare. We all know that social goals are better achieved by correcting market failures than by suppressing the market. When this phase of introducing public money into our system ends, when all citizens can use a digital euro, the benefits of moving from the current system to a different, safer, and more liberalized system will be seen more clearly. And the debate, which is now focused on the introduction of public money, will focus on the design of the best transition formulas. If today we are discussing the introduction of a limited CBDC, tomorrow we will talk about the transition to a full CBDC. In any case, the path to that future, like everything in history and life, will not be linear. Most likely, the future will be as the present is, an unpredictable mix of disruption and reform. Thank you very much. So yeah, thank you, Mr. Odanius and um, Manuel, your question. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Ordonez. Um, uh, thank you very much for this insightful full speech and your, your views on that uh, movement that is currently taking place. So um, my name is Manuel. Uh, I'm also part of the board of Monetative and I've been uh, involved in this whole topic with Monetative for a couple of years. Um, I think many of the participants might know me and uh, I'm very happy that uh, I also had the possibility to get in touch with you, uh, Miguel. Uh, in the last couple of years, uh, we were in good contact, and um, I'm happy now to jump back into your your text, into your uh, speech, and uh, ask um, directly some some questions to some uh, some parts of your of your speech here. So um, before we open up the the questions to the audience, I would start by some some questions here. So in the beginning, um, you focused on some some problems of the current money system, and uh, what has come up uh, a couple of times is uh, the ineffective and indirect monetary policy that you mentioned. So I was wondering, uh, what do you actually mean by this indirect and uh, inefficient uh, monetary policy? So how can it be more effective under a, a CBDC system, especially under a full CBDC system that you described? And uh, you also mentioned that the manipulation of the interest rate, <coughs> sorry, of the interest rates uh, as an ineffective monetary policy tool uh, and uh, what, uh, in your view, would actually be a better monetary policy tool? Okay, well, I think the best way is to compare how monetary policy is working in uh, the current system and how it would uh, uh, work in a public safe, uh, a full CBDC system, as I say. Well, in, in, in a system where the money is public safe, the central banks will be able to carry out a direct monetary policy by delivering the money created to the citizens, either individually or to the state, uh, as they are now, the bank, central bank do it with the uh, benefits, with the profits. It would not be necessary, it would not be necessary to force citizens to go into debt to increase the money supply, like now. Monetary policy in the current system is an indirect policy in the sense that in order to increase demand from final agents, central banks intervene in the market in the short term to modify interest rates. It is assumed that if banks lower rates, banks would increase credit and indebted citizens would increase demand. And conversely, 
for citizens to reduce the growth of their demand, central banks increase interest rates and commercial banks reduce credit growth and those citizens borrow less and demand grows less. And this has worked reasonably for the case, but in the last uh, 10, 15 years, in the last 10 years prior to the 2008 crisis, in the period that we call the bubble, central banks were relatively successful in maintaining moderate inflation, but they failed because demand grew exponentially, mainly demand directed to real estate speculation. The indebtedness of citizens and companies grew spectacularly until giving rise to the banking crisis of 2008. Then monetary policy also failed when it tried unsuccessfully for the economy to recover after the crisis. Central bank cut, cut short interest rates so that banks would uh, give more credit. But it happened that citizens and company were very heavily indebted and they, they didn't uh, uh, ask for more credit. Later, the so-called quantitative easing was tried in which central bank also started to intervene in the loan interest, uh, uh, long-term interest rates, buying public and private bonds. This has worked somewhat better, but also with regressive effects on the distribution of wealth and with a very high level of state intervention in interest rate until they become negative. Then how will monetary policy work in a public, a CBDC, full CBDC system? Well, in which all money is public and there would no longer be fragile money and so on and so on. Money, monetary policy can be direct and then it's more effective. It's, it's, you do, it's not indirect. You, you go directly to the people or the state that demand then, and that's why, no? Uh, uh, and and it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's true even that now, if we have the limited CBDC, that bank, central banks could uh, direct money injections, direct money injection to economic agents, but they will not do that if we maintain the current system, because this would mean reducing the business of commercial banks and we would have problems of stability. That's why we need that the, the, the whole system is a system of public and we don't have the fragile banks, the fragile deposit banks. Thank you, um, very insightful. Um, I want to go ahead within your, your text and within your speech and then you focused after the problems you focused on the introduction of the CBDC. And one point that I found really interesting is that you said that is it has not been uh, the, the state authorities itself that actually came, came up with the idea uh, to, to introduce such a CBDC now. Um, but you say uh, basically uh, that it has been the market and the private initiatives uh, that uh, drove the institutions to, to focus now on uh, the issuance of such a CBDC. Um, well, what I what I believe is I see the main driver in basically the new technologies, um, which uh, made it basically possible to transfer uh, digital uh, tokens from from person to person, and especially um, I mean the emergence of uh, new currency projects uh, in cryptocurrency, but then ultimately also Libra, um, and then. Um, when these um, we we currently use uh, claims on banks as as euro uh, money, for example, yeah. And when these claims on bank A that I hold uh, need to be transferred from the balance sheets from bank A to bank B, um, then uh, the system needs another asset, which is central bank reserves, uh, to actually settle these transactions. And now with this new technology, it could be very easy to transfer the claims on banks directly between persons. So what I now wonder is, do you see a future for these private stable coins? So, so to say, because these are basically all this, these are the, the claims on banks and they would then be tokenized and then transfer from peer to peer. So um, uh, do you see a future for that or where do you see a potential um, uh, threat or a potential, potential problem with these direct transfers of claims on uh, commercial banks, which we currently use, but for which we need central bank reserves to settle these? Mm. Well, uh, I think there are two questions. I'm going to answer the first one. Why I say that the 
uh, was the market uh, uh, was the market didn't fail fail the state and and this is the idea that uh, uh, i think is important to show that the system we have is has it has not been created by the market it has created both a lot of protection and regulation is a creation of the state during a long period because the banks had a lot of problems and since the second part of 19th century we start to give liquidity injections uh, 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 deposit warranties with the crisis etc and so on and so on and then that is important to know that uh, because let me say one thing i i think uh, hayek the economist had very good uh, uh, i have not agree with many things but i agree with with some things and one when he was talking about uh, reformers with uh, reformers said uh, well it is better not to uh, create something that is better if the market has created something no because the the uh, the actions of individuals creating many things that probably are not with the, uh, correct he mentioned the languages languages are full of contradiction and so on but if you try to to do something perfect that is Esperanto, that is not useful. That is not, no. And, I, and sometimes when I was studying the, the how to go from the current system to a public system, I, I thought that I realized that really the creation of the, uh, the current system not, had not been created by the market. And then just uh, uh, what we have to do is to liberalize and allow the market to provide banking activities. And then, but for this, it's important that the money is not fragile. And that's why the two things, the, uh, uh, the providing public and safe money and liberalizing banking activities is really very important. And what happens that the banks now have the two things, they create money and they have banking activities. And that's why one day Bill Gates said, uh, a sentence that I like very much that was, uh, uh, we need banking, he said Bill Gates, but we don't need banks anymore. Mm. I mean, we need banking and, 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 and with full competition, but we need safe money. No? That is the, the, the first idea and why I think the, the, the system we have now uh, now is very, very far from the market especially in banking activities. The other the question is the, 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 the possibilities of new uh, uh, technologies, especially, well, the stable coins and so on. I would say that on technologies, I am a little agnostic. I mean, I am not, uh, I think, well, technologies are very important. If we don't have technologies, we could not have a CBDC. The new technologies provide uh, uh, a lot of possibilities, and one of them is what you have mentioned, the tokens, the possibility to use tokens and instead of accounts and so on and so on. And uh, uh, then that's why it's very important to uh, ac accept or design some crit criteria that technologies should uh, uh, comply with that. I mean, uh, for instance, let's talk about one stable coin, Libra. Libra number one, the Libra that they launched in, in, uh, in, in June or July uh, 2019, uh, 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 was very bad from the, uh, uh, and, 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 and I think we should not accept Libra that as was designed. Why? Because it was based in deposit, fund deposit, another asset that are not safe. And then, the problems of stability, you are going to have the same problem that we have now with the banks. Mm. And in addition to that, they could create money. And then that is not tolerable. And then that's why I think one criteria should be uh, all money should be public. We are not going to allow private money of any kind, a stable commercial bank or whatever. It should be back 100% or be uh, uh, public money then and and it's one criteria and the other criteria is nobody except the state through the, an independent body create money in the system and then this there are more public criteria that we should introduce in this debate and and that's why 
uh, Libra uh, number two, the Libra that they launched during the, the coronavirus, well, they accepted that in a certain sense. Of course, we should be very cautious. And of course, we should uh, 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 know that big tech have a possibilities of uh, uh, dominant posi uh, position of minion, and I don't know how to say in English, no? <laughs> dominant position, and many things, and we have to protect consumers, and so on and so on. But if the money is public, and they do not create money, and they provide services of payments, complying with this public criteria, well, if you provide public uh, uh, payments through the smartphone to 1,700 1, million people in the world, I think that is a good uh, thing. If not, yeah. not. But that, and that's why uh, I think technology should work, but they should work under the principles and criteria, thinking in that the system should be public and the rest should be privatized and in full competition. All the services, payments, lending, all. Interesting. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, going ahead with your with your speech, um, you also mentioned um, the negative impacts of commercial banks uh, by the issuance of such a CBDC. And um, I mean, we were debating about this uh, inside of the monetative a lot, uh, because in the literature, most of the times, the effect of on the commercial banks are basically referred to disintermediation. Um, so my question would be, what do you think about this term? Uh, does it describe the potential effects on commercial banks correctly? And uh, which uh, effects do you actually see? Well, I, I think that uh, some critics of the CBDC and public money uh, want to alert about this, what they, they call disintermediation. In fact, there is one thing that is true. CBDC public money is not compatible with private banks as we understand now. Then the effect, for instance, of a full CBDC now and change without any transition, a smooth transition, will be a collapse of all banks. I mean, this is not because they, they could not uh, act, they could not exist with the state protection and privilege that are based in that they provide private money. Then, uh, uh, then, and they use this idea because it sounds, I think, very well, because, well, you are going to destroy the current intermediation. But what is curious, and I think we know very well after the some working papers of the Bank of England, that private banks and commercial banks are not intermediaries. They are not intermediaries. An intermediate, an intermediary, is between the saver and ask the saver to uh, provide funds and the investor and so on and so on. But no, in the case of banks, the uh, uh, savers do not decide where to lend, to whom to lend. They are, no, they put the money and the bank used to invest then or creating that money through the credits. Then that's why I, I, I think it's, it's a total error and, 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 and it's absurd because if there is no intermediation now, how are going to affect and how are we are going to disintermediate? I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's really a, a, a misunderstanding of how the, 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 the system mm -hmm. works now. I also see, I mean, that, that the uh, literature sometimes discusses some points. So, for example, a potential balance sheet increase of the central bank or that the refinancing costs of commercial banks might uh, increase due to that, uh, because, I mean, the banks will have to refinance a higher share of the loans that they will grant uh, uh, or the assets they will buy. But uh, to me, also, this has nothing to do with uh, disintermediation, especially when you use that term which describes uh, to, to at least most of the people something completely uh, different. And those people that uh, don't know how banks work, when they hear disintermediation, they directly uh, feel that, uh, I mean, uh, banks are intermediaries and believe that. So I also think that this, this term um, uh, is, is a bit of misleading. Yeah? And, I, 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 see. Yeah? Sorry, sorry. No, you, you can. No, you can no I, 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 I agree entirely with you. And, and it's related with the other position that is the, the uh, we have now credit, investors have credit, 
and they are not going to have credit in the new system. But it is absurd because uh, if you have a monetary policy that you give the authority to increase the supply, why? Uh, why? Well, not to have inflation, not to have deflation, no? Then that means that they are going to adapt the aggregate demand to the output potential. And then that means that the consumption and investment in the system will be correct. I mean, all, all will do what uh, they want, consume, invest, and so on. But will be the market who decide who is going to have the credit and so on and so on. And of course, will be a lot of intermediaries because it's not thinkable that they will be down in the market like in a, a, a market of a city. I mean, it, uh, one of the things that uh, market provide is enormous variety and diversity of intermediaries. And no intermediary will be like banks now that say, mm. well, you give my money, your money and I will decide to whom I am going to invest. Then that's, that's why, uh, but it's curious because they say, no, we are going to have less, less demand. Is in, no, no, that is different thing. It's a, if you uh, charge to an independent body monetary policy, the task of this independent body is increase uh, uh, supply of money until you don't have inflation and more than if you have deflation. Interesting. Um, maybe one last point, um, and, and then we will open up the, the questions to the audience. Um, but what struck me very much and what I found really interesting, and I think this is also part of your analysis in, uh, as a, as, uh, in, in total about the current system, is at the end, you said um, that the disciplines of the markets uh, do not really rule in part of the financial system, which are actually the banks. And can you please elaborate a bit more why you do believe that in the banking system, uh, the rules and the discipline of the markets uh, do not apply? Because I mean, there are hundreds of banks or thousands of banks that compete with each other for deposits and also loans. Um, so isn't there uh, not really a lot of competition already? Well, I think that is uh, more, I, I mean, one thing is that, uh, the, that there are several banks uh, does not mean that they, there is comp a, a full competition, no? And I think it's more, it's easier to see things if, if we see uh, uh, the competition in two activities of the banks, because uh, uh, when, when one sector have a lot of protections and have a lot of privileges and, uh, and, and is heavily regulated, there is no competition there. It's, it's, uh, if you have some uh, uh, producers that have tariffs, have quota, uh, limited entry and so on, there is no competition, I mean, and this is the case. I mean, this is the case, you have a, uh, and then why? Because it's not competition among the few that have, uh, are in the model, but people that is outside and, 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 and entrepreneurs that are outside. For instance, in lending, uh, you see now that some platforms, P2P, P2P to lend and so on and so on. Well, I think it's a miracle that they provide any lending because if you imagine, you put in, in, in their boots and, 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 and say, well, my competitor, the bank, I have to go to ask people to give me money to lend, no? Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, the banks have uh, warranted and uh, a, a, a financing that are deposits without cost. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible, no? And if uh, I have problems of liquidity, I'm not, I am not going to have any support and the banks could and the banks could access to the public money because now there is a, a CBDC now there is a central bank digital currency that are the reserves in the central banks, but they are not open to any. Then, then it's impossible to compete with, with anybody that has those lot of that, that amount of protections. And in the payments is more clear. I mean, now all the payments should be done through banks in any moment. I mean, then 
uh, that's the, <laughs> absolutely, no? And then one of the good ideas of, of the good results of this limited CBDC is that at least for public money, we are going to give the possibility to have payment services without going through a bank. Mm. And we will see that small difference, that is not a small, by the way, is <laughs> very important, will, will provide a lot of initiatives, a lot of services, a lot of, uh, uh, because at the end, uh, innovation is the best result of competition. And if you don't have innovation, if we don't have, uh, uh, you don't have competition. Thank you very much for, for these last uh, remarks. Um, I think we can now open up the, the uh, questions to the audience. Um, so, uh, Simon, should we go uh, first by first? So, um, maybe uh, Andreas uh, Söderlund, um, he wrote that he, he has a question. So, um, Simon, could you unmute Andreas um, so that he can ask a, a brief question? Yeah, I did so far. So, Andreas, are you is your audio on? So it seems like it's not working so far. No. Now it's working. OK. We still cannot hear you. You are unmuted, but we cannot hear you. So otherwise, I would suggest we go on with Martin Clancy, and afterwards we go back to your question, Andreas. Hello, um, Martin Clancy here. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Yes, thank you. This uh, I am from Ireland, member of the Green Party. Uh, very briefly, we're in the Monetary and Banking Policy Group, and we're proposing and our junior minister and our finance spokesman are pushing our own colleagues in government, we are in government at the moment, and pushing the finance ministers in Europe to allow Ireland to develop a sovereign digital credit system to supplement the present demand for our triple demand of COVID, climate, and uniquely in Ireland, Brexit, and we're asking the present participants and our august speaker to support us in that approach. A sovereign digital CBDC for, with the Irish Monetary Issuing Authority as distinct from the ECB. Thank you. Thank you. Do you also have a question uh, to Miguel Ordonez? Yes, whether he would endorse that approach as sovereign Irish, in this case, as a pilot, a pilot uh, uh, C, C, D, excuse me, CBDC uh, for the Irish Monetary Issuing Authority, which would be developed to issue that particular credit. Okay. I think we well, can we can follow up on that one, uh, maybe with with further information. Or uh, Miguel, do you also want to comment? Yes, on that? yes, because I don't know the proposal. I can. Yeah. You could understand that I cannot. Can you not understand? It's a, you call for a digital credit system, but I'm asking for us to support a sovereign Irish digital credit system within the present Eurozone banking structure. I think it, it uh, might make sense to, to send further information on that. Uh, uh, to see whether uh, Mr. Ordonez is uh, supporting that. I would, I would uh, uh, co continue now, maybe with the next question. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, Klaus, uh, would, you, would you ask your question? Yes, um, yes, I'm Klaus Kavert. I'm uh, at the moment chairman of the Monitor TV board in Germany. And we are discussing um, also the possibilities of debt, what we call debt-free money. In the moment, uh, the central bank money is always has, uh, produced with a liability in the central bank balance sheet. But uh, there has nothing behind this liability. There's no more gold behind. I think it's historically uh, it's not, not more necessary. So my question is, do you think that the 
now in this moment, in this historical moment of introducing um, CBDC, would it be possible to, to produce it without having a corresponding liability in the central, ben, uh, in the central bank balance sheet? A little bit like, like euro coins now. Coins also don't have a, li a corresponding liability in the balance sheet. What do you think about this? Would it be possible to have this, this discussion or is it? Uh... Well, my, thank you. Thank you, Klaus. My, my view is the following. I mean, I think that uh, debt free money would be possible in a full CBDC system, in a system where all money is public. And not uh, uh, and, and not private money like uh, now. Then it is possible in the current system to to introduce this kind. I think that theoretically it is possible. It is possible to to is is what uh, well Franz Coppola and others talk about helicopter money, and then you provide money without uh, 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 debt. But I don't think uh, uh, any uh, regulator and supervisor and central bankers could accept that because that is going to reduce the, 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 the business of the commercial banks for the part that you are providing that because the, the, most, the main business of the banks is to provide money, uh, 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 creating uh, credit and money. Then that's why I don't think uh, in practical terms, not in legal terms, that it would be possible and so on, but I don't think that in practical terms, uh, central banks uh, could accept that, especially in a moment like now that the situation of profitability of banks is very serious. I mean, it's not, uh, we are really in a moment, and well, and, the, and if you follow the, the, the market price of shares of banks really are, under, under, under the, the, the value in, in books. Then that's why I, I, I don't think, I think it is possible, but I don't think it will be uh, really. But, uh, may I ask again, uh, I, I'm talking about central bank money producing. What does it have to do with this bank? I don't understand the, the connection. I'm talking no, the about co central bank well, money. The, the, the connection is that now most of the money is created through that, I mean, it's, and it's, uh, uh, or, or direct, uh, is a business of the banks, uh, yeah. creating credit on selling bonds and so on and so on. And this, uh, 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 if you need to amount the supply of money and you supply without that, without these current instruments, you are going to uh, affect negatively to the business and profits of the banks. And that's why, if you don't have the banks, I mean, in, in the system where you don't have uh, the kind of banks we have now with all the protection, of course, you could do uh, you, all the intervention, all the injections of the money will be uh, debt free. Thank you. Next uh, question comes from Enrique Titos. So Enrique, could you? Um, or otherwise, I would say we just give Andreas uh, another try. And oh yeah, it, it works. Sure. And... sure. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Miguel Angel, for your speech. Uh, my question relates around uh, the attitude of the ECB in, in terms of proactiveness in issuing a CBDC. Uh, you have mentioned uh, uh, in several occasions the, the implication of a CBDC in terms of financial instability. And as you know, uh, especially Europe is, uh, is a very bankerized continent. So whatever implication on the banking system will be major in a continent like Spain, as compared, for example, with the US or with, uh, or with China. So, so my question to you is um, whether you believe that the ECB should be taking a, a proactive role in approaching the solution, even if that is gonna be painful, even if it's gonna be requiring a transitory period, as you mentioned, or whether the ECB should be taking a sort of backseat role that seems to be the attitude that, that is taking until the publication of the Digital Euro Report. So this is my question. Well, I think that, uh, well, the, the ECB is being proactive. I mean, it's been, it's not uh, what I think about that. I mean, all the statements of uh, uh, Lagarde, uh, 
the uh, testimony of Fabio, Fabio Panetta in the parliament are saying that they are, uh, well, working to have uh, the CBDC. But obviously there is a conflict now on the effect of uh, uh, banks, it's obvious. And that's why we and SDB should be cautious in the time, the moment and so on, when you are going to launch that and with uh, uh, how many limitations and so on. Then I think it's a, it's a very delicate uh, project, especially this uh, limited uh, CBDC because uh, you don't have a, a transition to the new system. But what could happen is that really, unfortunately, the situation of the banks are so bad that probably we could enter in the face of the China transition to help the banks to stop being banks. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> instead of providing subsidies like now, general subsidies that end in, well, in demand for uh, speculation and so on and so on. And, and then you could use probably less subsidies that we are using now to help the banks to giving up the deposits, be substituted and so on. I don't see, frankly, I don't see that in, in, the, in the near term. I think, and I is, is, uh, express in my intervention, that I think that this uh, design of transition will be once we have a limited CBDC in place, because it is important because that the people, the population, the civil society know very well what is public money. And now it's very difficult to explain this. I mean, we, Monetative knows very well, and I know very well that uh, uh, it's curious that it's not easy to explain. But if you have public money, even in a limited amount, it will be uh, easy. But uh, let's say we hope that the banks uh, improve and so on. But if banks continue to be in that uh, loss of probability, it will be important to subsidize and help the banks, but to stop being banks. Because now, what we have done now uh, during the COVID crisis, something that I think is, uh, I, I agree entirely with the, what governments and central banks and ECB has done that is to help the banks and to say, you don't have to make provisions. You don't have to introduce capital requirement. I am going to give you, to give you a thousand of millions of euros. And uh, I am going to change the system of remuneration. A lot of decisions to help the banks. And I think that is very wise because you could imagine a banking crisis in addition of the COVID crisis. I mean, I agree entirely. I, 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 in, in general, I agree with all the governments and, 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 and central banks do during at, uh, as far as we have the system. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I think it's important to help the banks and, and avoid problems of stability. But uh, if, the, if, if, if uh, that situation continue, it is possible that we should think how to use these subsidies to avoid the problems of systemic problems that we have. And then the banks could be intermediaries. They could provide lending, they could provide placement and so on and so on, but not creating uh, fragile money. Thank you. Um, the, um, Andreas Söderlund seems to have some technical problems and he uh, sent us his question, uh, which I will read out now. So uh, his question was, should we really allow any private and surely profit maximizing actor to be a middleman in any financial activity? Money is an absolutely vital part of modern commerce and trade. And I see CBDC as a key in this. Wouldn't any private part through their profit seeking and money making, uh, making money from money through interest, percentage on sales, for example, in the end disrupt the actual function of money, which is to facilitate trade in the real economy and not as today used for huge profit and financial speculation. 
So well, baby, ba yeah, may, did, you, may did you get that? Yeah. No, I, I, I think that it's very important to separate and squeeze, the, this, distinguish between money and payments, be, between money and payment services. I think money should be fully public. No, no question about that. And once, and, and that would uh, happen immediately if you take out the deposit warranties, the liquidity protection, because nobody will put their money in banks, in a private enterprise, and nobody will create a bank because it, it could not work. I mean, then that's why uh, uh, I think then money should be public. That for me is, is uh, obvious. And that is the end. The full CBDC is the system, what we call before sovereign money or whatever. Uh, but service, uh, payment services, I mean, how to pay is something that I think that should be entirely private, entirely private, because there you have competition and it's like the supplying of uh, uh, food or so is, is, is in the market, I mean, and what supermarket will compete with the small uh, 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 shops and so on and so on, but you don't have a, a nationalized and public or what is worse, what we have now, private by supported, but supported by the state, uh, the banks to provide payments, no? Then that's why money, I agree with you that money should be public and, and, and you cannot enter the profitability and so on. The, the creation of the money should be guided by the idea that we don't have inflation and, uh, and, and, and deflation but not because I have demand where I can gain a lot of money like now. Then, but, uh, but please, if we divide clearly between money and payments, we could at the same time uh, privatize in a certain sense, all the service, the, the payment and services, and then all payment providers will compete with clients to provide a lot of services and so on as this happened in many, in, in, in many sectors of the economy. Then you could have uh, uh, probably some uh, uh, intervention because uh, 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 all these service providers could need uh, the infrastructure general that could be provided by the state, by the central banks. Well, perhaps, perhaps, I don't discard that they are one part of the uh, system of payments that could be public or public agreeing with the service providers and so on. Uh, I, I don't discuss that. But in general, the connection with the, the people, the connection with the users should be private companies. And if you see any problem, you could subsidize or do that because uh, we have learned from the, the, the fall of communist countries, one thing, that the worst thing is suppress the market. The market have many failures, but it's better to have market and correct those failures with targeted interventions. Not like now that we are giving subsidies and project and protections to private companies <coughs> to provide payments and lending. Thank you. Um, Hans Florian, uh, please uh, ask your question. Uh, <laughs> try to make it as brief as possible, please. Yeah. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Odonius. Um, I have the question, if we could have a money which is not in need of a monetary policy, which is working by its mere construction, obviously it needs to be a different type. Can you think uh, uh, what type it could be, should be? Uh, Manuel, could you help me? Because I don't know the question probably, or, or you. So uh, Hans Florian, I think the question was if there could be, or if you, uh, Miguel, could think of a money which um, is not uh, you know, interfered by any type of monetary policy. So uh, Hans Florian, do you mean, ah, you mean a, a Bitcoin, percent example, rule or? Bitcoin, for example, no, that you yeah. have. Is, is that the question? Yeah, but, okay. but not Bitcoin. Bitcoin is... Well, uh, Bitcoin or, or whatever. A K percent uh, rule. A CBDC. Well, I, 
I, I think that for a long time, I don't know if we, we will see, I think I very difficult that uh, one uh, coin, one currency that is not public could be used as a means of payments. I see very difficulties and we see with Bitcoins. You cannot pay with Bitcoins. Well, you, you mm -hmm. transform in dollars or in euros and you buy with dollars of euros. Then uh, uh, that uh, uh, it's probably that in a long future, two centuries or I don't know, it is possible to have a currency that is not public and is a means of payments. And, and that happens also in, in situations, uh, uh, well, in terrible situations like in the, during the war and so on and so on. No? But, uh, but in, in a normal state, I see that that will be very difficult. They could not, those that, uh, that create that money uh, would not be, uh, would, would not get to convert it in means of payment. It will be an asset, an interesting asset. And uh, that asset will be important uh, because you could uh, avoid problems of inflation, for instance, because people could buy those assets uh, going out from their currencies. But I don't see that those uh, coins could be money. Means of payments, I mean. Um, Miguel, Hirota, um, so you also had uh, a question or two, so. Um... Hello, uh, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. And uh, I have two questions. Uh, first, uh, well, very uh, practical question. Uh, re you know, recently the uh, Euro uh, ECB had issued a report saying that each national uh, central bank, for instance, the Bundesbank in case of Germany, or Bank of Spain in, in case of Spain, and so on, should issue CBD, uh, CBDC instead of uh, the no, no, uh, European Central Bank itself. Uh, do you agree with that idea? I did not uh, see that idea in, in no report of the ECB. Yeah, there I saw if that. I I read. Uh, 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 according to my understanding, uh, the uh, no, European Central Bank uh, suggested each uh, national central bank, so uh, like Bundesbank in Germany, uh, Bank of Spain in Spain, and so on, should issue CBDC instead of the uh, Bank of no, European Central Bank itself. This is what I, I read. I, 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 I didn't see that. I mean, it depends what do you understand by the word issue. Mm -hmm. If it's creating the only issue of money in, in the Eurozone is the ECB. Other things is that if you could use the, the central banks to distribute like now, no? Physical mm -hmm. money, but the, the, the issuance is a mm -hmm. faculty of the European Central Bank. Mm -hmm. It cannot be, uh, we, we could not, uh, we will not see uh, national CBDCs. Yeah, well, okay, yeah, I was, uh, and another question is that, do you think uh, CBDC is a good argument for those people who, without a bank account to have their own bank account? Because uh, even in within the Eurozone, there are some countries where a significant number of citizens still don't have bank account. For instance, in Lithuania, only 83% of the population have a bank account. And in the Slovak Republic, in Slovakia, it's 84%, and in Greece, 85 That means in those countries, uh, between 15 to 70% of the population still don't have bank accounts. That means they are excluded from the uh, financial service that we can enjoy. So, in this, uh, you know, given this fact, isn't, isn't it important for the ECB and of course other central banks, you know, especially in the so-called southern you know, developing uh, developed countries to issue you know, start a CBDC as a way for or, you know, to promote that kind of financial inclusion? Well, I think that that is one of the most important benefits of introducing CBDC, inclusion. I mean, the, that uh, a, a good design of CBDC would allow people to pay to others without having uh, uh, accounts in a bank. 
that is the, the great, uh, I mean, uh, idea of the, the Libra, the 1,000, uh, uh, 1,700 uh, uh, millions of people that do not have an account and have a smartphone. And they could pay with a smartphone without banks' accounts. And that is one possibility that should provide any limited CBDC that we design. Because that is very important. It's, and in fact, is uh, that uh, if you now could uh, uh, give a, 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 or transmit a message by WhatsApp, from the point of uh, any point of the world to any point of the world, completely free, no? completely free, by the way, that is more complicated to trans uh, uh, transfer a, a message that transfer a number. I mean, if there is any uh, anything simple to use in a digital world are the numbers. I mean, and then that's why uh, it's probably the, the most important. And it will be, as you say correctly, it's not only the, 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 the uh, developing countries that have this problem. In the United States are around 30 million people that do not have an account. Then is uh, that is not so important as in other countries, of course. But then I think inclusion, uh, payments inclusion, would be one of the best benefits of uh, a change, even if limited. Maybe adding to your last uh, points that you made, uh, saying that uh, WhatsApp. Uh, is is possible currently, but sending out uh, money from A to B is not. I think uh, blockchain technology um, has been part of the solution to that problem. And Helmut uh, Rüdiger now uh, has a question regarding that. So Helmut, you want me to read out the question or do you want to unmute and ask yourself, uh, ask the question yourself? Uh, yes, thank you uh, uh, for calling me. Uh, um, Good evening and thank you for everything, uh, uh, for the interesting uh, ideas. Um, uh, Mr. Ordonez, uh, as you said, the, uh, the public uh, does not even understand the actual system uh, with, for instance, the, the difference of uh, central bank money and, and bank issued money. Um, but strangely, they understand uh, very often they understand uh, uh, blockchain <laughs> or they discuss it at least. So uh, now for um, when uh, Madame Lagarde uh, announced C CBDC, uh, one of the first cry outs I heard was our privacy is in, in danger. Um, they will know everything about us. Um, and this will come with uh, blockchain technology. Now, there are several, uh, several questions with well, this. First, uh, is really is some blockchain technology, uh, um, is it important or is it requested for CBDC? Or can you simply go uh, make CBDC with simple uh, uh, account systems as we had all the time? Um, now an, an account uh, with the, uh, at the ECB for every uh, um, every citizen, um, and my question would be, uh, perhaps it's very complicated, but uh, which would be the the consequences for privacy and for uh, data safety for the, with the both uh, both ideas. Uh, a simple account system or uh, um, uh, a blockchain technology CBDC. So, thank you. Well, I, I think that is one of the key questions that are being discussed today. When a, 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 I, I, I told about the, 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 the list of questions that are being debated in the uh, BIS, uh, BIS report, because is that I mean, the question of privacy, the question of the kind of technology, the convertibility, the uh, secure, that uh, the payment is instant, that is resilient, that is scalable, 
that is interoperable, that is very important because different platforms should, shouldn't have the possibility to uh, have captive the sectors adaptable and so on. Then, I mean, there are those things that I, 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 I cannot enter in, in, in discussion. What I want, I think we should give that to the expert. What we should decide at this, at, this, at the level of public society, the public interest, is that the solution you give me is correct. I mean, in the sense that money is public and so on and so on. And on the privacy, I think that uh, there, uh, uh, the, the question, and I am, telling, I, am, I am telling that I don't want to enter in these questions, but I am going to enter. <laughs> in the privacy, I think that uh, uh, I, I see that there are possibilities to have part of the public uh, uh, money in, in tokens, probably with Bitcoin and others, but not all the, 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 the public money, because it, it is also important that the fiscal authorities and uh, the authorities that uh, go against financing terrorism and so on and so on, they have information and not privacy. Then, uh, and, uh, but I see this thing I read, but what is important is that uh, uh, we don't create systems like this one we have with private money, without uh, uh, power of the state and so on, that we do not create uh, a system where uh, uh, there is no competition in provision. I mean, this kind of general principles. I, uh, unfortunately, Helmut, I specialize in general principles, not in, in details. <laughs> Uh, there's one last question from uh, Virginia Hammond. Um, so Virginia, maybe you unmute yourself and also ask your question. I, I had a point of clarification. You, you commented a couple of times, including at the beginning, that there's a benefit to this partial limited introduction of a public money. Uh, and that, that one of the benefits is it will push the banks to design their transition. Um, what I, I'd like you to talk a little bit more about is why that um, limited introduction of public money needs to be debt, um, debt money. As I understood it, you said that it needs to be debt money so as not to cause a collapse of the existing system. Um, so I just want you to talk more about why the advantages and disadvantages, why that public limited money could not be um, asset money and not debt money? Well, uh, uh, I think that well, the, the public money is not asset money. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not a promise to pay. It's money. I mean, and it's safe. Then uh, why I, because I see some that uh, criticize this limited approach. Okay, but why I defend that we launch and we contribute to this limited uh, uh, CBDC. The main two points that I try to say is one is that we are going to have public money. Now we don't have, the public money is not accessible to citizens, not to companies. And then we are going to go to a world that even limited, they are going to know what is public money. And they are going to see that it's not, has not certain problems that have public money. And then the other question is that the other good benefit is that it's mostly probable that we are going to have a more competitive system of uh, payment services, obviously, because uh, it's what uh, is, is, uh, is the, the good part, I think, of, uh, of private companies that see that the banks are doing very bad and they, they see that they could fulfill the desires of the customers. And then I think having a more competitive payment services with this question of inclusion and so on is very important. And the last one is that uh, the idea that uh, it, it is also a, a, a contribute to understand what could be a full CBDC system. Because now it's very difficult to explain that the same money is good banks are creating problems or the system and so on, then you open the possibility to do that. 
And that's why I think that, of course, but well, in general, I think uh, the good revolutions are not the revolution because revolution change everything that are done in an act, but uh, smooth, step by step. In fact, uh, I think our obligation is convert one revolution in one reform. And then, and reform because at the end, we have a good system. And sometimes if you try to do revolution, you don't get what you want. I think uh, maybe, maybe stepping into this question, I think uh, this question, but also the question of Klaus uh, kind of uh, coincide because I think the idea of both was um, if there is not a possibility to actually issue the debt, uh, if issue the money, the CBDC basically outside of the balance sheet of the central bank. So say, for example, currency, uh, currently coins are basically issued uh, from, from governance, from, from the finance ministry, and then they are bought from central banks. So there is direct seniorage that is transferred to the um, sovereign state, actually. And it is not, uh, when you look at coins, they are not um, uh, accounted as a liability inside of the central bank balance sheet. So the question now, I mean, we, there was a lot of debate in the past as well, for example, in the United States, where people have, um, um, you know, demanded that the finance ministry actually uh, coins a $1 trillion coin because this would be debt-free money so that the debts could be uh, written down. And I think uh, that is the bottom line, as far as I understand it correctly, of the question of, of Klaus and um, also from Virginia. If uh, you see such a possibility that the central bank could actually issue this type of debt-free money outside of the balance sheet. I, I I didn't I didn't see those proposals. Yeah, I am not in in position because uh, because I probably because I am thinking in the future, and in the future money will not be a liability of central bank. Yeah. No money. Yeah. My idea. That's why I think uh, if you allow me, the description now central bank digital currencies. I would say public issue uh, digital money, and. The, the currency will be issued by the public institution, but the public institution will be a register. It will not have to balance it. I mean, the, the money immediately created will go to the citizens. And then there is no liability. You decide the amount of money that you should create and you put the money in the pockets of the individuals or in the budget of the or mix or whatever, no? But that's why I have problems uh, uh, trying to understand this idea of debt, not debt, uh, uh, liability. And that's why I need time to answer those questions. I, I, I have not thought enough. Clearly, I think it is, a, is a, it is a vision. So it is also part of the vision of Monetativa, for example, to have exactly what you described, to have a register where this money or the registry where this money is being registered and then can uh, be you know, channeled from, from person A to person B, basically, mm -hmm. uh, to, to actually take out the money from uh, any balance sheet, because uh, it, it does not have to be part of a balance sheet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I hear now from, from a couple of uh, people here that Joseph uh, Huber, you also might uh, have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> uh, please uh, yeah, go, go ahead with your question. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I, I, I guess I made uh, repeatedly some mistake when trying to, to come in here in the chat. I, I registered. Re I was registering myself wrongly. Yeah, uh, thank you for now. Um, yeah, adding to the question of, of whether a CBDC can be debt free, surely it, it could be theoretically. But I think uh, the act of, of introducing CBDC as such, so that will, that will, um, that will take up all the energies and, uh, and coming back to that idea or implementing at the same time the idea of for the monetary authority to separate the money creation from the um, banking operations of the monetary authority I would say this is likely to be a bit too far reaching at once. 
So coming back to Miguel saying the, the reality will be more a step-by-step -step, um, procedure. Because to, today, um, uh, today, uh, when the central bank is issuing money, it, it, will, al it will always be um, a double entry of an, a credit claim and a liability. And that's the way it, it, it works today. And a modern money theory tells us uh, to think that formally it is debt, but in actual fact, we need not, we, we, we would have to reinterpret the debt not, not to be debt. <laughs> this is a bit tricky, but um, I guess they think it will be um, it will be kind of what Keynes called uh, a zero coupon, a perpetual zero coupon, uh, a perpetual zero coupon uh, console. So kind of eternal debt, debt which is not debt. But uh, well, yeah, um, uh, Miguel. Uh, among the many things you said, I, which I liked, uh, there was in particular one, one formulation when you said that now, currently, we are discussing limited CBDC, and tomorrow, when the CBDC will be introduced, uh, which I assume uh, that will happen very soon in the, in the coming one, two, three, four years, then we will discuss how to make a transition from, from limited to full CBDC. And of course, I like that idea that very much. It's, it's a very important perspective for us to have because it will take time and we should not lose um, uh, that perspective. But now I have, um, coming back to Virginia, I, I have a, a question to you, some sort of asking you for a kind of clarification. When you say uh, limited, limited CBDC, uh, what exactly do you refer to? Uh, do you mean simply the fact that we will have a system, a side-by-side -side system when central bank digital currency, sovereign digital currency will exist side-by-side -side in coexistence uh, with uh, continued uh, uh, bank deposit money in um, also in competition? Uh, with uh, each other. Is that what you understand by uh, a limited CBDC? Or do you refer to the, to some, to the idea that, or should I say, um, uh, the access, the public access to CBDC will be limited, will, um, 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 uh, willfully limited in a sense of there will be a selection of, uh, of actors who will have access to CBDC and other actors who will have not. So for example, the idea of limiting CBDC to wholesale payments and leaving out the broad public, the, the retail payment public, so to say. And I think um, possibly for technical reasons, they will start, uh, so the process will start like this but, but very soon, I guess, that when CBDC will be in place, it, it will, for political reasons, it will not be possible to privilege, to have a privileged access to it. it. It definitely needs to be, and I guess it will be very soon, a universal means of payment. And uh, the question whether it will be limited, or more or less limited, will actually depend on the market demand for CBDC. And uh, this will regulate. Uh, that question. Uh, let me say another one thing. If we would have some minutes spared in the end, I would like to come back to that to that issue um, uh, from uh, the, the, uh, the the participant from Ireland, whether it can it is possible and, and reasonable to have a parallel sovereign digital currency in one nation. I, I want to, I would I do not want to talk it right now, but perhaps in the end when we have another two or three minutes. Thank you. Well, uh, Joseph, on, on on the limitation, no, on the limitation, uh, I have uh, the reason of limitation. I think is clear. If you don't introduce limits you give the possibility of take out 
all the deposits in private banks in seconds. Because the digital money do not have the problems of storage, theft, and so on that you have physical cash. And you don't have to go uh, make a queue. Then that's the problem. The problem is that I think if we want to go step by step, we need limitation. That is the first idea. The second is how. And they are, I leave the expert <laughs> the decision. No, I have two ideas clear. I mean, I think you should not limit the access because it is important that all citizens and companies and so on access to this CBDC. And then you should limit the volume. And the other clear idea is that I think the most hideous idea to limit has been the idea of remunerated CBDC to give the possibility to distinguish between the two remuneration and even introduce the aberration, in my view, the negative interest rates. But not only negative, but positive. I think money is not risky. If you don't risk, you don't have right to a remuneration because you don't have the possibility to lose. And then that's why I, I, uh, I am totally against of the idea of introducing remuneration in CBDC. But you know, fortunately, I think that now most people is, is, uh, is uh, turning, no? And even the article of uh, Panetta say, well, it will be only for certain uh, tiers, no? The last article in Boxing you. Then those are my ideas. But it would happen, as you say, that even that is small, quantity and so on, is going to uh, political and so on, ask for more. Then that's, I think, the solution will be to work and anticipate the transition. The transition and helping bank to make the transition. Because now uh, that means uh, what? Well, I see there are many, many systems. You remember the the, the articles of Ben Dyson in the Times with positive money uh, study these questions, or the uh, article of Brune Meyer no, saying the substitution with uh, lens. But uh, let's be clear, we, we, we don't have a good system of transition. We have not thought very much in the transition. Well, you have also the proposal of Thomas Meyer. I think that that work is very important is terribly important. And the only thing I say is that I don't discard the, that we use subsidies to help bank to do that. That is normal in structural reforms. When we uh, decided to close the steel uh, uh, enterprise in, in uh, when I was Secretary of State of Economy many years ago in Spain, we decided to use a lot of money to help workers to adapt and so on and so on. Then it's not uh, the transition to a, a free market, uh, uh, probably use it. And in this case, the amount of subsidies implicit and explicit that are, because nobody has calculated how much means the liquidity support, the deposit warranty and so on and so on. We have a lot of money to help. Then I mean that if we have that problem that we see a more demand of more central bank digital currency, I think unavoidable to study a transition. Thank you very much um, for, for this, this insight and this point. Um, I mean, we are now 90 minutes into the talk and um, I think all the questions have been uh, answered and all the questions that were inside of the chat have been answered. Um, so what I would do now is basically wrap uh, the session up and uh, formally again thank you uh, very much for your time and, and effort uh, to, to give your insights and also answer all of your questions of our questions uh, and to provide uh, further information on how you see this public money revolution, how you call it. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Miguel, from, from all of us, I would say. Um, and um, yeah, then I would end this, this session now officially. And uh, I would like to come back to, to Martin uh, Clancy's question